you guys could just say your name for the camera, please. Uh, Rich Humphrey. Keenan Humphrey. Okay. And I apologize in advance for doing this to you guys. <laughs> so, um, first question is, where did you guys grow up? I mean, Rich, if you want to go ahead and field this one. Um, Keenan was born in Oregon. Um, I actually grew up in the Berkshires. Uh, and spent 23 years in Oregon. Keenan, anything you want to add to that? Or you all um, no, that's about it. But <laughs> since second grade, I've been in Rhinebeck, so. Here. Yeah. How long did you you say you were born in Oregon, but you moved? Here? I moved to um, moved a few different places to Fishkill for about a year, uh -huh. and then ultimately moved to Rhinebeck and have been here. Okay. So. so you've always been near the river, and you've yeah. Well, you've had a life all around. Here. Did you guys know about the bridge sure. before, or did you? Is this one of those things you were mm, no, you were no. I think I I started rowing. Um, with Hudson River Rowing Association in 10 years ago. Okay. And that would be my first introduction to the bridge, really. Okay. What was the, you rowed with what organization? Hudson River Rowing okay. Association. Yeah. Okay. Which is just celebrating its 10th anniversary. <laughs> and you're still with that? Yes, okay. yes. Cool. As well as coaching the Rhinebeck High School team. Yeah. What, uh, you coach the rowing? The rowing team, the crew mm -hmm. team. Yes, the crew team. Were you part of the crew team? Yeah, yeah, I've been on crew since last year. Okay, how is that when you're with your dad? It's uh, having my dad as the coach. It's different. It gets a little annoying sometimes, <laughs> but. <laughs> but it's fun. It's yeah. Fun. Well, I guess you have to say it's fun because you're. How often you guys are on the wharf? I'm assuming you guys are always in the Hudson. I mean, yeah, we're uh, we're running Monday through Thursday um, after school, and then um, Saturday and Sunday. Okay. Uh, six days a week. What do you do with Fridays off, Keenan? Curious. <laughs> um, <laughs> pretty much just sleep, try and get my energy back up. What time do you guys start? I mean. After school is Monday and Thursday. Yeah. Sunday, what time you guys um, the early, um, seven o'clock on the river. Today was uh, a regatta, um, oh. a race, so it was a little bit earlier. Had to be there at six. And you guys use the uh, communion boathouse, not the. Uh, the correct. Right? Yeah. Oh, okay. That's not too bad then. So, I mean, how often do you guys actually go by the bridge? I mean, um, pretty much, almost every day. Um, um, probably a little more in practices, like the, the turnaround point after a race is just before the, the railroad bridge. Oh, okay. So, um, um, but during practices, we'll often go south and go under both bridges. I'm curious, what kind of impressions do you usually get when you're going under the bridge? Obviously, when you guys are racing, you're probably not paying too much attention to it, but... Right, well, it, the, um, curiously, I had a boat kind of drifting very close to the first piling mm -hmm. um, on Thursday. And I put my launch in between the yeah. boat and the piling. That's the closest that I've ever been to the piling. And, and it made me wonder whether there was, whether it's an iceberg, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, or if it Tennis does go down. straight. Yeah, I was worried yeah. about the prop on the motor if there yeah. is, if there's more that comes out <laughs> underneath the water, um, concern it, that's where you're and it's a, and it uh, and it really struck me the <coughs> the immensity of the structure um, being that close to it. I mean, I've passed by it a lot, but never within arm's reach. Yeah, you, you don't usually like to be that close to it. <laughs> I mean, Keenan, does it ever? Bob, you ever get anxious when you go on that thing? It might fall. On yeah, it, it doesn't, you know, I get a little scared <laughs> sometimes because it's pretty big. Yeah. Huh. Is there anything really you need to ask? Oh. I have seen the falcons diving. Um, right under there? Yeah, from the bridge a, a few times. Do they ever dive oh. at you while you're <laughs> No, they, no, they haven't. <laughs> Eyed me as bait yet? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that would be interesting. <laughs> happened at, uh, at the Fenway Park. It could happen in, in here. 
I'm curious, even before today, how much do you guys actually even know about the bridge? Not yeah, a is lot. Is it really just more so the personal experience you guys have getting close to it and whatnot? Or? Yeah, well, I've, I've been aware of this, the walkway project since it started, I okay. think. I started seeing snippets in the paper, and I always thought that it was a really interesting, cool idea. I've always wanted to be up there. So um, you would go up there if you could. If you could go up there. Yeah. yeah. You wouldn't be scared of? No, no. I mean, Apparently it's very high. So yeah, it is very high. Yeah. Um, now, the bridge you, at one point, um, was the finish line for the what was called the IRAs, um, the Intercollegiate Rowing. What is it? IR. No, it's a Intercollegiate Rowing Championship um, that was held there for many, many years, um, and those were four and six mile races, okay. which are pretty incredible yeah. distances. Uh, they used to have large wooden numbers um, on the railroad bridge, which, really? were, which were the lane markers. And when I started rowing with Hudson River, we used to row out of Clearwater, which is now Quiet Cove Park. Yep. Um, there used to still be remnants of, of those number placards. Um, I don't see any sign of them now, and they must have fallen off or you said the been taken off. The races were four to six miles? Four, uh, there was a four mile course and a six mile course. And the bridge was the ending point? Or the yeah, point? it was the end. Um, so those numbers marked the lanes that the, the coxswains oh, okay. would be in, you know, that yeah. would be their their finish point. Okay. Um, and <coughs> they ran, those races were so popular that the railroad on the other, the freight railroad on the other side yep. used to have um, flat, flat cars set up with bleachers. Really? And they would move crowds of people <laughs> um, down the course as, as the as the people raced, um, which is really a great idea for crew races. Like to, you, even this morning, these are just 1,500 meter races, and they start up near Quiet Cove and finish right in front of the boathouse. Mm -hmm. And you don't, you really don't get to see very much. Yeah. Um, it's hard to even tell w which one of your crews. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know their lanes, but it's it's very div it's a huge river. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's small boats you can't really see much of the race until the last three to five hundred meters yeah. so how do you guys feel when you first uh, like how long ago was it since you've been rowing how wh at what age did you start was it did you start rowing when you were younger when you were no no i picked it up uh just from an ad in the paper for learn to row yeah. and and then I'd always had an interest in it. It always intrigued me. Um, Portland, I used to see the boats down on the Willamette River, um, and it, so it always intrigued me. So how was it when you first got in the boat? How does it feel when you're first doing that, when you're on a big river? Is it kind of frightening at first? Or is it sort of yeah, I think it is pretty yeah. frightening. And then when you go under a structure such as a bridge, do you feel a little safer because you've got something in the middle of all that water? Or is it, how does that feel? I don't know if I get that sort of <laughs> sense of security <laughs> from, from yeah, 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 you kind of wonder what's under. Yeah. Keenan, how do you feel when you're, you're when in the water? Yeah, is it the when I first got, you know, the first time rowing, mm -hmm. it was a little nerve-wracking, didn't really know what to do, kind of just got thrown out there and was like, okay, see what you can do. Yeah. And, I don't know, the, going under the bridge probably didn't help my sense of safety much, right. but... <laughs> Is it, you know, it's a, it's a very sturdy bridge, it carried locomotives. How would you right. feel if it still had locomotives running across mm, the That would be that would more unnerving, I think, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this noise factor. And <laughs> is it, uh, when you go under it, is there a sound that you sort of, you know, like uh, echoes? There's probably yeah. more sound on the, you know, the mid-Hudson because of the traffic. Right. You, you do hear that echoing and stuff. Um, yeah, but the, bri the railroad bridge, no sound, or is it 
that's, no, that's that's pretty silent there. That's a pretty silent spot. It's almost more silent than when you're out yeah. on the open river. It kind of closes mm. a lot more. It's like a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah, it does yeah. feel a bit like a a vacuum. It's kind of creepy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The um, we use the the railroad bridge as one of the safety markers. Um, whether we can go out on the river as well um, in foggy conditions. Um, you have to be able to see, see the bridge. From yeah. what point? From the boathouse. Oh, okay. Yeah. And if you don't see it, you don't see it. If you it, don't see it, you don't go out. Okay. You, you just don't go out. Yeah. How would you feel if you were going ar under the bridge while there was people, you knew if there was the walkway already and there was people on top of that? How do you guys... I think that would be really cool. And, yeah. <laughs> and you know, that the Hudson River Rowing Association is in conjunction with this, what do they call it, quadrennial? Quadrocentennial. Quadrocentennial. They're hoping to bring back the IRA courses um, as kind of celebrate, you know, part yeah. of that celebration. They'll, they'll be running that same four and six mile um, course that was used. For September for that? Or for yeah. That yeah, for oh, very yeah, good. yeah, just part of the celebration. Um, so maybe we'll see markers on the bridge again. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, that would be cool, and and it would be great for spectators, right. um, yeah, I was knowing just about that, to say that people were up there watching you. That to have spectators at a race is you know, yeah, inspiring. Would you, would you be afraid of anyone throwing stuff? <laughs> <laughs> that's a thought. Yeah, I think that would also almost be cool thanks, to just thanks have our for team planting up there. that <laughs> planting that seed. <laughs> <laughs> if I was so on the, the bridge, this happens, you're gonna be that person. Yeah, we'd be traveling how fast at the bottom of 212 feet? <laughs> 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 Gonna bagel impale you. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, that probably would. <laughs> How fast do you go when you're do you, do in you a cruise speed? shell? Yeah. You know, Depends. I, <laughs> I really don't know the the actual knots or miles per hour. They did. They have uh, raised a water skier. Wow. Yeah. That takes yeah, behind it. <laughs> yeah, so it's got to be a. But that's got to be a really good boat to <laughs> beat that. <laughs> Have you guys ever worked together? You've rowed together, or is it more? Um, no, I don't no. think I've ever been. I, well, I, I've coxswained your boat a long time ago. Oh yeah, when yeah. I was yeah, I guess smaller. <laughs> my yeah, my daughter <laughs> yeah. and my daughter uh, was on the crew team also, and she coxed my master's team for a full season. Oh, okay. so that was kind of cool. Are you in an eight-man boat, or is it a four or the skull? Man? I eight and fours. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I'm also in both varsity four and varsity eight. Oh, okay. What's the di is it diff more Just difficult? People to put in the well, you know, the four boat yeah. is smaller, so it takes less people to row it, and it's stronger. but it's less stable. Yeah, the four boat, it's hard. It moves around more. Oh, that's kind of scary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so so do you, would you prefer to do an eight-man boat? Or I actually prefer the four because really? it's less people, so it's. Almost Less things it, could yeah, go wrong. Yeah, <laughs> that it, it's it, it's easier to communicate. It's easier to like if something's going wrong. It's easier to see how to fix things. Right. Okay. Whereas an eight-man boat, you're uh, pretty on. The problems are amplified yeah. from front to back. And it almost feels like I'm going faster in a four. I've always kind of had that sense. And they're they're smaller. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Shorter and. Are they thinner too? Um, so yeah, they Slightly. are, yeah, a little thinner. I'm all set on number, yeah. Is there anything you guys wanted us to ask? Get in there, Jason. I guess I would ask, I, I don't know if there's an answer to the question. Um, if you've ridden on any other waters, could you compare other waters to the Hudson River in terms of rowing? Um... No, the Hudson's really challenging um, because of the tides, uh, the tides and the wind. Um, and as far as the the beauty factor, I you know I think the bridges add a lot to that. Um, 
you know, seeing, seeing the bridges rise f from the banks of fog, um, it's really uh, pretty majestic. Um, and looking from, coming from the south with the bridges silhouetted against the Catskills mm -hmm. is, is really quite a sight as well. Where else have you rode? What other Oh gosh! Quite a few places. Yeah, um, Housatonic is a is a very beautiful river down in the Derby area, which is where the Yale Boathouse is. Um, Rowing a few lakes, which is a lot easier. <laughs> it's a lot more tranquil. On yeah, areas. less wind. Um, the Charles uh, that event up in Boston is is all bridges. You go under. I think seven different bridges during that course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I remember that. Now, do the bridges in the water, does that affect your, I know um, if you're on two different kinds of rivers and one has a lot of bridges and one doesn't really. If you're in a stretch of water that doesn't have any bridge, is it different to row on that one than it is with a lot of bridges? Does the bridge affect Ooh. the waters as much? It's not the effect on the water so much as uh, the obstacle. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you know, bridges are obstacles. Um, yeah, uh, especially at uh, the Charles, at the the bridges are all these small arched, oh, right. um, which barely fits. These arches barely fit two boats abreast, and these races are going off um, right. a boat every ten seconds. Uh, and there's passing going on, right. um, a lot of collisions. People hit the bridges. <laughs> People and the hit, boats. Other, hit yeah. other boats. Um, uh, there's a Chinese team that crashed with another team. Uh, the boat sunk. They flew all the way from China. And they and survived. They right. sunk. The boat sunk. Okay. It, it was a pretty <laughs> funny yeah, YouTube okay. vi uh, video of that. <laughs> they all abandoned ship and started swimming for shore, and there are boats of racing that yeah. had to avoid bobbing heads as yeah. well as... If you crashed, God forbid this ever happened, but if you crashed into maybe a bridge on the Hudson, how would that affect you as if you crashed into another? Would you think the tides would be difficult for you <laughs> to master? That's uh, yeah. Well, that's the purpose of always having a launch yeah. next to whatever boat you have Same out there with life preservers, yeah. and that yeah, that bridge would be pretty unforgiving. <laughs> crew shells are very light, and they're made of just minimal amount of material. Right. It doesn't take much to go right through them. Yeah. So don't crash. Yeah. <laughs> the completed bridge um, benefit racing, competitive racing in general, attracted more to the Hudson Valley perhaps? I think with the r if they were to revive this race and continue it on a yearly basis, I think, I think that w the walkway would be a tremendous draw um, to the sponsors and I mean I can see banners hanging. And <laughs> Lots of people watching. Eat at Pete's Famous. <laughs> 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 Whatever. And yeah, I think it could be a tremendous draw um, to our club membership, uh, um, to the racing community, getting clubs from other states perhaps to start coming. Because the Boathouse is a tremendous addition to the Hudson uh, River as well. Yeah, that was a big thing when it kind of opened up. And that has drawn a lot of high school participants, mm -hmm. but we're still not seeing um, much in the way of additional participation in our regattas, our right. home regattas. Um, I think that the walkway really would put us on the map a little yeah. bit more, because that, you know, that would be so unique. Almost like a landmark. Would you go up on the bridge if it was completed? Oh, pardon me? Would either of you go up on the bridge? Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. That'd be cool. Can't do this. Yeah. Can't do this. You're welcome. Great. Great. Cool. All right. All right. Cool. It's a wrap. Yeah. So.